Chapter 24 The Rhino Now for the rhinoceros, said Uncle. Rhinoceros, repeated Kitty. Not quite right, old lady. It's a difficult word, isn't it? All it means really is nose horn. Or let us say a gentleman with a horn on his nose. You get the same idea in the name Unicorn. Many rhinos, though, have two horns. We will call him Rhino for short. Everybody does. The rhinos they found lived with the elephants. That's because of their size, said Uncle. Next to the elephant and the hippo, the rhino is the largest animal on earth. Elephants and rhinos are also close relations. But for the moment the children would only think of the elephants. They had seen them before, but that was in the grounds. Here they were in their own homes. The elephants only condescended, it seems, to give rides to children in the afternoon. That's mine, said Phil, proudly drawing his mother's attention to the little or Indian elephant. It's mine too, said Kitty. I woed on him, Mummy. Joan and the others were more interested in the big African elephant. He came to the bars to look at them, and then extended his long trunk almost to the barrier. Joan drew back, frightened. She had known what it was to have an elephant's trunk twirling about her face before. The others were delighted, however, and began at once to empty their paper bags, though everybody kept urging everybody else to save some for the others. Uncle had told the children already how clever elephants were, but they would never have believed any animal could be so clever as this one was. For when Harold threw a biscuit, which missed fire, and fell in the space between the cage and the barrier, so that neither the elephant nor the children could reach it, the cunning rascal put his trunk as close to the dainty as he possibly could, and then blew. The draught so created rolled the biscuit to Harold's feet, and all he had to do was to pick it up and throw it again. Well, I never, said Mother. The children were all so pleased that you would have thought they had blown the biscuit themselves. Presently they remembered that they had really come in to look at the rhinos. But the rhinos were not to be found. They were, in fact, in their yards outside, and the largest had almost concealed himself by burrowing under some dry straw. His next-door neighbour was more obliging. But when he came towards them, Kitty screamed and ran back. He's honourable, I don't like him. Oh, he can't hurt you, said Uncle, and I don't suppose he would if he could. He's rather a bad-tempered fellow, but not anything like as fierce as he looks. Does he gore people like a bull? asked Phil, who secretly was always a little afraid to go across fields where there were cattle. No, when he fights at all, it is generally with his tusks or his huge body. The horn is, strictly speaking, not a horn at all. It does not grow out of the skull, as a bull's horns do, but is really a hairy or fibrous growth. If you care to try, you can cut it off with a sharp penknife. I shouldn't care, said Wally. I should, said Phil. Only, I've left my knife at home. Uncle laughed. It's just as well. All sorts of things, like drinking cups, can be made out of these horns, which are often a foot or more long. And the Chinese, strange to say, use them as medicine. As medicine? Yes, they are ground up into a fine powder, but exactly what ailments they are supposed to cure, I can't say. But nearly all the horns that are exported from Africa go to China, for that purpose, and I believe the same is true of Borneo and Sumatra which have a smaller kind of rhino of their own. Have you ever shot a rhino, Uncle? asked Phil. Yes, once. But they are getting rather rare now, and as they live chiefly in swamps and groves, where they are concealed by the long reeds and grass, it is hard to find them. The hide, as you see, is enormously thick indeed. I think the navy people must have got the idea of armour plating from the rhino so that a bullet glances aside if not carefully aimed. 
Even the lion finds grown-up rhino too hard. A nut to crack. Though he will attack a little one when a rhino baby takes a walk. The careful mother, it is said, goes behind with her horn on its rump and thus steers it. Really? Mother laughed. There's a lot to be said for that. But when one has a double family to steer and look after, she glanced round the waiting group. Perhaps a stick would be better. It would, said Uncle, flourishing his cane. Now, who wants to see the hip, hip? Hooray! cried Phil. But of course, they all knew that Uncle meant the hippopotamus, though not one of them could have spelt it.